Hello everyone. So what we're going to do today is to try to install the Oracle 19C database. Uh, but before that, we have to come up with our own OS. So we have to install the Oracle uh, 7.8 version first, and then we will um, install the database inside the OS. So we have to come up with a server first. So our first so these are these are the steps that we're going to follow today and our first step is to set up the virtual machine and then we will you know configure, configure a couple of things onto the server set up the host name and take care of the firewall and the uh, se linux policies then we have to install the prerequisites and updates then we have to uh, make the directories where the Oracle software will get installed um, and the data, uh, you know, this, the, the directory where the data will be residing and we have to uh, edit the bash profile so that uh, the Oracle user um, get access to the necessary directories um, and we have to install the software after that. So let's start with the VM, um, set up in the VM. So this is the virtual box on software. If it is not installed into your um, PC, then you can just go ahead and search in Google, just typing or call virtual box, then it will get you to the link where you can download the software. So this is uh, the software is used to manage and you know play with those various uh, virtual machines. So let's um, click the new button because we're going to uh, install a new uh, OS. So let's give it a name. So so the name is let's say um, Home DB. Okay, Home. Home, um, home DB. Okay, so and so this is the directory where the software is going. Uh, you know, the OS virtual machine files is going to be uh, there. This in this directory. Then we have to select the ISO file. Let's click on. So we yeah you need to download all the you know so the iso of the linux um you know that we're going to be installing so in my case i am installing 7.8 so if you search to the um to the i guess firefox let me just pull up the firefox first and just go ahead and search for uh or full linux um 7.8 and it will get you to the iso directory so the yum.oracle.com so you have to download the full iso so the full iso of version 7.8 so this one you download it and you copy it your desired directory and from there you will get to select the iso in the virtual box software so let's select that one and then um so skip unattended uh installation so 7.8 server click next so let's give it a memory so i have uh 32 gigs of memory in my system so i'm allowed to i can sort of give a lot of memory to it i guess 10 gig but you don't have to give this much so let's just reduce it to let's say just 8 gig of ram and let's um give it two cpus you can also um it's it, it's okay if you just give four gigs of ram memory it will be installed smoothly and 
uh, the Oracle soft Oracle database will also run because you're just using it for test purpose. You're not going to use it in your um, production system or you know you know your developing developing system. So four gigs of RAM is just enough. So just put it your desired uh, amount of memory, then two CPU, and then so the size of virtual uh, disk. So we will give it to let's say 30 gig. So 30 gig should be more than enough. If you just put 25 gigs, then that should be enough too. So we will um, take on pre-allocate full size so that uh, you know it is. Uh, so the advantage of pre-allocating before installation is that uh, the whole space is already available to the virtual box to install and configure and everything. So that uh, you know if the uh, what if what happens if you do not pre-allocate space is that when the space gets full then it tries to reallocate so the um the storage gets fragmented because it not necessarily gets a, a sequential space to read and write so the disk so the virtual disk gets fragmented it hampers the read write speed and the overall virtual machine performance so it is better if you can then pre-allocate the full size so in my case i'm doing that um to 30 gig then press next and this is the details of our um um you know the the virtual machine that we're going to do. so let's finish now let's power up the machine by uh, pressing start but before doing that let's do some additional configuration okay so the system we don't need the floppy and then displays everything is fine storage we need to configure that enable audio networking we also need to configure that serial port usb we don't need any usb shared folder don't need that interfaces doesn't matter so you can uh i guess um you know a whole couple of settings here but we don't want to disturb anything okay so let's configure the storage so the storage is good because we already added the virtual drive um in terms of network um let's make it a bridge adapter why well bridged adapter will allow your virtual machine to access to the internet using your router so it will um, appear to your router as a separate uh, operating system so your router will assign a, a an un, un, unallocated uh, ip address to your operating system and that way your operating in the virtual machine will get access to the internet and we will use the internet to install the prerequisites and updates so that's why i select bridged adapter and pretty much that's it we don't need any additional settings then press start so this will start the installation process um so click the first option install oracle linux 7.8 so the installation is running we took some time um so hey so these are the options available to us. So we can select the language, we'll continue with English. Um, language is English, date and time. You can change it based on your region, say United States or India, or maybe somewhere else, maybe somewhere in, you know, you select your region and country. And then, um, Installation source, 
nothing to do in that regard kdump disable it so we don't need kdump kdump is a way to capture the log and you know what is happening to your operating system so a part of the memory is going to get captured and you can use it, use it in case your you know your virtual machine or your os get crushed if your os crashes then you can analyze uh the kid and better later but we don't need these things um installation destination need to configure that security policy nothing to do on that front um, network and host name uh let's turn that on and press done so as you can see this ip address is assigned to us through our router so 192 118 is given to us press done and then um let's go to the installation source uh oh, okay so nothing to do installation destination yeah so we can sort of um i guess uh configure that and also we can leave it as it is but let's configure that okay so um let's press that and i'll configure partitioning do not press until data okay just click on i will i will configure partitioning and then press done it will get you to the uh, to the to the configuration window and then click here to create automatically so we need one gig for boot which is more than enough so nothing to do that regard you can sort of increase the swap space let's increase that to let's say plus um or you can ignore it later uh, during the time of your installation so yeah we will just uh, you know, increase that a couple of gigs and let's reduce it to um, i guess 24 and then give that space to uh, to the subspace but uh, we actually don't require to do that but let's do that anyway so these are the three um partitions that we need to make so slash boot slash flash which is the root directory which is 24 gig and swap is given Five gigs of space, and then we have 44 meg available. We, you can simply add the 44 meg to, let's say, I guess, make it 100, and uh, so the, just increase the swap space. So you you can do whatever with the extra things. Let's just uh, let the uh, extra bits of space go west. We don't care because it's just a test database destroyed and the change it will do its necessary tasks to uh, and then we just press big install so the installation is taking place in the meanwhile we can set up our root password and giving just a let's say let's give the password as oracle and then oracle oops i guess the password did not work. let's give it something else i'm giving my name okay you can give whatever you want um then press done you can also install um create your own user so I like creating one for my with you know for my user just to um, do some configure check out some configuration but you can you know easily do it later after installation but you can also do it within you know before the installation taking place 
um, let's say I'm creating a user with my name and making this user as an administrator. This is just to uh, make the whole installation process and you know maintenance process or configuration process easier. You can create a user, but don't uh, create a user with name Oracle. Why? Well, because when we are going to install the prerequisites yum repository from the yum repository then it will automatically create a username oracle so it will get conflict if you you know it will be a conflict if you create a user with oracle right now so we will let the prerequisite uh, software configure uh, as its own so just create a test user you can also name it as a test user or something like that i'd like to create a user with my name for the use of ease of use so press done you have to press done twice just to confirm because you know the password policy is um you know we are not confirming to the password policy because we're uh, giving a fairly easy password um to for the users pretty simple password which is yeah you know easily can be easily guessed so that is why oracle is throwing us warning well give well why don't you set a, a more complicated password but let's not do that let's do it something easy so we are done with the initial steps of our setup with uh, the virtual machine. So we went ahead with minimal installation. Okay, so this is something to make sure. So we are not going to have a GUI or a graphical user interface. Instead, we will only have a CLI. The advantage of that is it is going to have a you know minimal um, um, you know uh, overhead because we don't need the GUI to install the database and its software so we don't need that so we are installing it without any graphical user interface just we, we are going to get a terminal to log into the os and that's it so this is why the installation uh is to, uh, went pretty smoothly and fast so let's reboot the server right now press enter And so that's it. We only have a you know terminal available to us to log in. So let's use my so the user I have we have created um to log in to the server. We can become root using ac command. Just give the root password. And let's test whether we can connect to the uh, to the um, internet. So ping www.google.com. So the ping is successful. So we are connected to the internet. Now what we do is um, check the IP address first. What IP address do we have? So we have let's say one. 92 168 200 and 118 so we can use that to uh, connect with you know from the host operating system too so here just ssh into okay so i'm using mobile extern so you can also do the same thing with um or, uh, or, you know from your windows uh, command line so ssh Cameo to the test user we have created 192.168.200 and 118 
and just log in so we are logged in let's make the fonts a bit big, bigger so here and then become root so give the root password Hey, so we are inside the virtual machine which we have just installed so first thing first let's check the host name so the host name is localhost local domain let's change it to our uh you know our test so let's host name ctl set host name give a host name as your wish you know for me let's give it a let's say home db this is our host name this is going to be our host name, okay so set that and then host uh, name oops host name is home db so the host name is home db and then let's check the was what was the next step to set the host name turn off the firewall and slnx okay so let's check the firewall status so system ctl status firewall d so the firewall is running so to stop the system cd stop firewall d it will turn off the firewall and then disable disable okay so it will re remove the firewall d permanently from restarting after the after the os gets rebooted the firewall will never get started again unless you do it manually okay and then let's check the status of SCD also get this uh get in so enforcing so SCLNs can be of three um you know three stages enforcing permissive and disabled we want to make the SCLNs disabled not permissive because we don't want we don't care about the SLNX logs anyway so why keep it then if we if you if you're not uh, caring about the logs and anything about SLNX then why just disable it okay, so vi slash etc slash um SLNX and then config okay and then Edit it, delete the enforcing, and type disabled. Okay, disabled. So make the SLNX disabled. Right and quit. So the directory we went to was slash sc, then SLNX, and there's a file named config. Just edit it out and just change the variable name to disabled we also need to reboot or we can set and force um disabled get and force enforcing so um okay just uh, just reboot the server then it will reboot the server it will uh, res uh, you know set the SLNX configuration to disable so let's check the status of the server so it is getting rebooted Okay, so we have the server available to us. Um, 
SSH to the server again. And then, um, what we will do is, um, let's check the status. So get enforce is disabled. So we have disabled the SA Linux. So we did all the steps of this step. And then we have to update the yum repo. So yum update why so i don't think that it is necessary you know you can also bypass this step but it is you know why not go ahead and do that as well but you can also bypass the update step too you don't need to necessarily update your linux um, os but you can also go ahead and update the linux os too it might take some time so um i don't know so it is a good practice to just press an update so let's just go ahead and update oh so i'm not root so become root first seo so then yum it why it will update your operating system but before that it is checking your repositories whether the repositories are up to date or not um so these are the available repositories available to you via auto linux uh or seven uk r5 letters so this is also up to date in your repository and checking out all the possible URLs, it can, uh, you know, go to look for the updated versions of the libraries so that you can update the operating system. So it will be time consuming. So you know i can also i guess pause it right now and we will continue after the update is finished okay so our um, yum update is completed um then we have to install the um yum repository uh, yum uh, prerequisite. So let's. So we have done with the updates, yum updates. Then we have to look for the prerequisite um, uh, RPM and install that. So for that, let's type yum search Oracle and then rep. I pre so type out that so this is searching for all the packages available with the name Oracle and among that we are looking for name with prerequisite so we're grabbing with prayer this time. Okay, so this is taking a lot of time. I don't know why. We just search for Oracle's instead. I don't know what is happening. I think why okay so let's search with oracle first so these are all the so yum search oracle this brings us okay so these these are the prerequisite packages we're looking for okay so it's not prerequisite so pre-install okay so i search with the wrong term so if we just search with pre-install pre-i then we will get the packages so pre i not pre r 
so we have three to choose from Oracle database pre install so um pre install 19c so we'll go with 19c so yum in uh, this one so just copy and paste up to this portion yum install Oracle database pre install 19c accept nothing else to do and you can also put y just to confirm all the guesses so let's go ahead and do that so yeah so it will also take some time to download and install all the packages rpm packages necessary to for local lightning c database get installed but it will not take a lot of time that's why let's not pause right now let's get it installed okay, so um okay so installation is completed and then so right now we already have a user named oracle added just by installing the pre-install software see so we have a user called oracle so we can you know switch to oracle user if we want so right now we are in oracle which we are using the oracle user and the directory is slash home slash oracle this is the home directory of the oracle so let's just get back and set the password for oracle ask wd oracle give it just a password it doesn't matter what kind of puzzle. Okay. What is wrong with past WD Oracle? Okay, so the password is up there. So I was typing on passwords, I'm matching passwords. This signal so pass the video oracle give password and then retype the password it doesn't matter if the password is weak or strong because this is a test server so we don't really care okay so pretty good it's this step is also done then let's um you know make the necessary directories and give permission to those directories um mkdir so this is our Oracle home and this is where the data is going to be residing so this is the duty for the data and then give necessary permissions to d1 and d2 do that copy and paste so, done so mkdir so all of these steps so this one will be available in the description but um let's check out the directory right now so cat not cat rather alas al so this one let's check whether the directory is available or not so it is available so the owner is oracle the group is o install right um now okay <laughs> sorry so we don't have the oracle database software right now so we have it in the hard drive so what was happening okay so let's get to the okay so let's go ahead and download the auto um, 19c download search with that and it will take you to the auto 19c download 
get the download there okay so uh we don't need the windows one we need the linux okay let's add the term linux linux and then it will get to this directory oracle in just like oracle database and you down for linux x80 um okay. so download this one okay linux x 64 19 3000 db home so download this one not this one okay we don't care about the rpm okay we are straight up downloading the oracle home and unzipping it to the necessary dear tool so go ahead and download this one so linux x 64 193 then 000 db home zip so I already have it downloaded in my hard drive, which is here for the backup. We have that. So this software, so this software, okay. So then we're going to copy this software inside our virtual machine. So the way we are going to do it with SCP. So we have to um i guess yeah i mean so get to this directory this is a personal machine okay. okay so we are currently at our personal machine where the virtual box is installed so from this machine we are using the virtual box software and true virtual box our linux machine for database is installed okay so go to the backup directory backup here grab linux so this software is available here so from from this um um this host so from the server we will copy to the host uh, to the guest virtual machine so from here so 200 and 102 we will copy to here to ipa to here 201.18 so from one one zero two so from 102 we will copy to 10 to 118 okay using scp so scp is a secure so it uses secret copy so secret copy this one to oracle at 192.168.200 and 18 and this title sign means that we're going to copy it to the home of Oracle. Okay, so that's it. Slash Okay, so this one. Or you could you can just type out the uh directory. So slash home slash oracle we're going to copy it to the home of the oracle so just um go ahead and do that yes password give the password of oracle so this is copying right now from our host operating system to the guest virtual machine okay. so the copy is complete Okay. So if we just become Oracle, then we are at our home, and here the software is available because we copied from the 
host to the guest operating system. So that is why we went with bridged adapter in terms of our network device. This allows um, connectivity from the guest operating system to all the other directions. So you can communicate with your um, host uh, machine or to the internet just with uh, one interface. So that is why this is the advantage of using bridge adapter. Okay. So, and also, so we have the software available to us. And then we also, uh, so what's this tape right now? So we have to uh, copy it to the, to the, to this Oracle home directory. We have set this directory as Oracle home. So we have to um, unzip it to this directory. So this is a zip file. We have to unzip it to the Oracle home. But, you know, before that, um, let's set up the bash profile file. Okay. So at your, um, at the, Oracle home. So we are at the Oracle home and here we have bash profile hidden file um, Available to us. So just uh, edit it out bash Profile so vi So just under the path But you know just okay, It's okay just um, press under and just copy paste everything from here up to our code setting. Paste. So we have our host name, HomeDB, then the unique name. Okay, so we will, you know, our database is going to be a multi tenant database. So that is why we are setting CDB1 and PDB1 as CDB and PDB name. And then this is the base, the home address, the path, and all that. So we have set the path. So we don't need to set up the path multiple times. We can just, um, but it's okay. You know, we are doing for test, so who cares? Just write and quit. And then just run the bash profile, execute it. Right now we are going to have the Echo Oracle Home uh, Home available to us. Okay. Great. So CD to Oracle Home. Okay. So, so something is wrong. Just yeah. Okay, I dot dash profile. Okay, you know what? Just um, uh, it messed up. So something wrong happened, which is. We shouldn't have put this on. Um, so we uh, mistakenly put the slash before the dollar sign. So this should not be there. Just remove all of them. Things will be all right. So this, uh, this, you know, instruction will be available in the dis description section. So just use that one. Um, what so tense. again, guys, I'm extremely sorry for this mishap. Um, so the corrected script will be available in the description, so just use that one, okay? So, um, temp will be found. Then, right on Q. Um, yeah, that's it.
no go down. Okay, so uh, I guess we have to do a couple of cleanups. So we are the so far. Okay, so just exit it out and then go to the the home. So city home slash oracle and then dash dash profile i'm just doing some some cleanup works okay so we don't have to do it um just uh remove all these lines okay then plus l to the bash profile and then become root then with more powerful and then just let it dry up bash profile okay so just forget all the other steps that I did and just copy paste this step okay just um use this setting paste Just write and quit, and then dot dash profile four dollar four. Great. Okay, so we have our um, zip file available to us, and we will unzip it to the Oracle Home. So unzip this one, and the directory is this. Press enter. Now, right now, it is unzipping to the directory, which is Oracle Home. So unzip the file. So the command is unzip, then the name of the file that is going to be get unzipped and then the slash d and the directory so the desired directory where the unzip files will be this is the command that we have ran so let's um set up the um dot Download so let's um also so the unzip is completed. So now let's get into the Oracle Home Directory CD dollar Oracle Home and we should be we should have uh, you know the unzip files are here okay so this is our directory and all the answer files are here great okay now what to do so what was the next step so the next step was okay so let's check the permission now so everything is belonged belongs to Oracle O install. So perfectly fine. So let's get to the root directory and check the permission from here. So D1 and D2 belongs to Oracle and O install. So we are just fine. Now let's log out of it. And we are going to run the installer. You know. The, the installation file installation software installation executable software so just exit it IPA exit so we have exited out of the virtual machine now login to Oracle, but this time just put X before that. 
okay dash x means we will allow graphical you know GUI is available to us okay so we are um so by this way um so you can remove the zip file we just downloaded just to save some space got nothing then dear page just to check up the space so right now we have 15 gig available to us okay so let's get to do the oracle dollar oracle home so use minus x this way the gui of the installer will be available to us so run this one so dot slash run installer and then press enter Okay, so the GUI, the GUI is available to us. So this is what we're going to use to install the software. Create a create and configure a single instance database, or we can set up the software. So just go ahead and select first one, then next desktop server class choose um more advanced or desktop class allow minimum configuration so you can choose any one of it so you can also go ahead and use the server class enterprise edition select that one so as we have mentioned in our um you know um batch profile so this is pulling up the address the directory from the batch profile so the this is the oracle base that we have decided to go with so press next then oracle inventory directory so the group name is o install press next um general purpose we don't need data warehousing and then the global name nothing to change here create a container database so do we want to create a pluggable database or not um pdb1 name of the database is pdb1 no change so put pdb1 here because well um because at our installation step this is what we have decided to go with okay so here uh pdb name is pdb1 okay so that's why um Create a container database and plug all the name as PDB. We are doing everything all at once. We could have done, you know, just install the software, then run DBCA to create a database and then a container that you know all those things. But let's not do that. Instead. next um no need to change anything here press next it's completely fine if you just reduce the memory to two gig it will be just awesome but it's okay so press next here 
the file system is the directory given in the bash profile. So all of these um, data is pulling from the bash profile. The installer is fetching out of the bash profile. So we have just executed the bash. So each time the Oracle user logs in, the bash profile gets executed and the variables get set. From there, the installer is using the values. Next, we don't have any enterprise manager. So press next, enable recovery. If you want, you can, you know, enable that. Press next. Okay, so our disk space is too little for setting up the recovery size. It takes a lot of, I guess, um, 25 gig and above, I guess. Um, around 27 to 30 gig extra space you need for enabling recovery, but I could be wrong, something lower, you know, some, um, uh, some lower number of storage you extra need to enable the recovery portion let's forget that okay so we are going to use a single password for all the accounts give it a simple password because we don't care so it is giving us a warning so this is just a warning that your password is weak we don't care so this yes and then you can um, change the groups but i'm just keeping it as it is you can also change it all to dba but this is the ideal or proper way to install so separation of duties is important for security reason and then press next we're keeping everything automatically run the script so you can give the root password here this way uh, the the oracle software will automatically run the root scripts for you or you can you know run the root script later manually all by yourself so i'm just giving it the, the root password or you can use a sudo um, account just to run the root scripts anyway so run the root script for us it's next so the so it is expected value so it is requiring more than seven gig of soft size we have almost five gig so just ignore all okay so we don't need this kind of soft space anyway so just ignore all then next yes you can so this is the response file so we can save the response file for later so just db the store so you can give it a date let's say 26 november 22 okay, save and then stop So you can also see more details if you want. Just press this button. So the DB is getting installed. Mm. Okay, so 
we have this window saying configuration configuration scripts generated by the installer needs to run as previously usual. Are you sure you want to continue? You have to use yes or press yes because there are two root scripts we need to execute. The install is good to execute. You just press yes. Okay, so looks like you have some something failed. So Oracle database configuration failed, database configuration assistant failed. Details. Okay, so the details is all over us. Um okay, so let's ignore that because uh you know the database configuration so dbca failed but we can also manu manually let's let's manually install the database we already have the software installed so we just have to add a database we will do that later so just press keep um installation the software installation was successful so configuration system failed so the are you sure you want to yes okay then close okay so we have the software installed right now so right now let's say we have ls and our ctl so we have the software installed but we do not have any d database so for example nothing so let's just um press dbca and then you know we have so this is the uh database configuration assistant so create database next so global uh, database name is storage let's give it a password pluggable database name is pdb1 global database name is um let's keep it okodb or you know uh let's get home db whatever or or so okay home db mm. So admin password just does not matter really. But give days
yes uh so we can save the response file let's not do that so um So the DBCA should be able to install add a new database. Okay, so, so I paused it because it took a long time to install but the configuration assistant installed the database successfully now we just close it so now let's um let's go ahead and check the listener we already have the database up and running for sql cross this is how we um, start up. <laughs> um, okay, so, uh, So uh, SID is CDB one. So CD there. Oh. Shoot, so the name of the database is So SQL plus so of so we need to Okay, so yeah, so the data, so the database is up and running, and uh, just change the just change the SID so the SID to home because we created the database with the name home. Select data from the dollar database. Oops, select uh, this. Yes, desk to dollar database. Uh, select open mode. 
from view dollar database read mode open the name let's check the name select name from the dollar database b a s e what is raw method man? so the database name is home so we have our database up and running plus nr ctl status great so just as we have created the database with the name home db just update your bash profile um uh, environment variable of oracle sid to home so that's at the bash profile so just update it the the oracle sid to home or the name of the uh database we have just created or just drop the database and then recreate again both of them will be okay okay so that's it for today uh um, let's check yes ef grab aura so these are all oracle processes running um yeah so we've completed our insertion of the database okay so thanks again for sticking up to this please consider subscribing to the channel and goodbye for today